This is a Bulldog Radio Podcast. Season 3, Episode 40. What's happening, guys? Brandon Worth here today, joined with a bunch of special guests today. Travis Hicks, as well as his buddies Austin and Nick are with us. Fellas, what's up? It's going pretty good today. How about you, man? Up, what up, what up? Not too bad. Excited to have you guys on and excited for you guys to be able to share. There's a project brewing up at Bulldog Radio. Would somebody like to mention what's going on? Oh, yeah. Me, Nick, Austin, and Dre, who's sadly not um, here this morning, all four of us will be starting a podcast. I believe we're leaning towards the name Knockout. I know Dre wants um, uh, probably another name, but uh, we're all going to make a group decision. We're planning right now for Wednesday afternoons to record um, some content, probably get a social media going with Instagram, hopefully maybe a Twitter page, possibly get some athletes, and definitely like discuss sports and maybe a few other topics that uh, people want to hear. And uh, We're very excited. Came up with the idea over um, Christmas break. We're all like, we always hang out together, so why not make content and see where it can go? I know Nick has another year here, and with me going on, um, and May and Austin a possibility of him staying another semester. Um, the show will still like be going on even possibly when I leave, so I'm very excited to do one with the boys. Cool. It's exciting. It's exciting times here. Another podcast. We can't wait to have you guys on, so make sure that you check out Knockout or whatever the name yep. may end up being. You can <laughs> three to one vote. Yeah, <laughs> three, three to one vote. It's already been it's already been made. But um, you guys can check that out and make sure you can follow us on the MVSP guys. We will for sure shout out and direct you where to find their podcast. But for all boys with our agenda today, Fair State Sports Report on deck as well as NFL divisional or excuse me conference championship predictions as well as some head coaching vacancies and the All Star voting for the NBA has come. And where did it go wrong? We'll let you know. But first, Fair State Sports Report on deck here. We got a full slate coming up this weekend, fellas. We can start on the ice, of course. Homestand tonight, Friday night, white out against Bowling Green State, coming off two big wins against Bemidji State on the road. I mean, this is the time we have now to get the momentum rolling, and let's keep winning here in the month of January. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. You know, we're 9-17. and 17. I know our record's not very good. A lot of people have been wondering, you know, about it. But I think we're better than our record shows. Like, we've had a lot of close games that we've lost that we sadly choked leads. Like, when you look back at the Michigan State game, up 3 nothing, then you allow four goals in the last seven minutes. That's something that can't happen. I think this weekend against Bowling Green and the opportunity to get a sweep, obviously beating Bemidji was great because they have a winning record, and a lot of people didn't see that because they have won the higher rankings in the CCHA. So I've, we have a chance to make a run, and we – we actually still have a possibility to um you know to have a home playoff game so i think at 9 and 17 if we can possibly get the sweep we've already beaten them at their place i think it'll be very big and they're having a whiteout theme tonight i think it'll be very cool to get the students out there and other residents in the big rapids area so um i think it's gonna be a big game tonight fellas hopefully we get a win and a nice crowd i've, I've agree the same thing with you i mean i've seen the past few games here they've been i've seen they won a few leads especially a lot of them at home but I, mean, I feel confident, especially with them winning through the games here at Bowling Green. Um, I think my biggest, concern, my biggest concern, though, is it's still in that third period. Uh, yeah. it's, I know we always talk about it, and we always talk about how we, we got to close these games. And I'm kind of thinking about how, what, what, what type of energy are we coming into this third period? Are we coming with some energy? Are we come with some enthusiasm? Or are we just kind of just, you know, lay over and just stop playing all of a sudden? I don't know. That's true. I think the crowd will, uh, with them coming out, with our momentum building from last weekend, uh, hopefully we c- they can take the momentum, the hype around the game and that, and bring the energy from the crowd. And hopefully that carries over to the third period and carries through all 60 minutes of ice time. Yeah, that's the biggest concern that I think we've had all season. That's been the narrative. Can we play 60 minutes yeah. over 40? That's been – and, I mean, we certainly did that this last week. So, I mean, maybe the second game we let off the gas a little bit. But five-goal lead, obviously, you can kind of let that slide a little bit for the W. But, yeah, I mean, you brought you, – you mentioned the energy, Austin. I know, like, we both have the experience of game producer, and we're kind, right. of, in, we're kind of in charge of making <laughs> that happen. Trust me, guys, it's harder than it, th- it seems. So, it really But, I mean, right now, like, we're looking necessarily – at 
what's the best possible way to get people in the stands for a game like this against Bowling Green? I mean, longtime rival. I mean, really showing that we we can win at home last week, and then beating a top tier CCHA team last week on the road. And like, I mean, I think that's almost as good as you could get. The only thing I could think of better is sweeping Minnesota State, which right. we almost <laughs> did back in November. Yeah. But I mean, right now, I think this could be a pretty good turnout. I think there's tickets still available, but if not, I'm sorry, you must have missed out. But uh, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun night tonight. It's gonna be a good hockey game. Oh, oh yeah. For sure, because like we even talked about that Michigan State game. I think we had twenty four hundred fans. That was the most yep. we've had a hockey game since like twenty twelve or twenty thirteen. So obviously, when all of us like we're not nowhere near college. So I think like it's a great opportunity for that. And the main thing is, can we win at home? We have a lot of big wins, but most of our wins are on the road. Obviously, our biggest home win is beating Minnesota State, who's number one in the country right now, right over on Michigan and Michigan State, two of um, the heavyweights in Division One hockey. So our ceiling is there. We can beat the number one team. I think we've been competitive in every home game even when you look back at the Miami of Ohio game where uh, we beat them four to two for the first one of the season and we already uh, made a very big progress from last year last year we had one win and our only win was against a d3 team trying and most people don't even know where trying university is because I mean it's trying but so I, think, <laughs> I think like you know we I think we definitely have more pressure I'm excited to interview Bob Daniels again tonight hopefully it'll be a good one after um hopefully they get the win but yeah it's a team we've beat we split with them before I think we can definitely the fans, like Nick and Austin, made great points. If the fans bring the energy, that helps give us a boost. You know, with the guys out there like Bradley, Logan Stein, and Roney, different guys. So hopefully uh, that will lead to a win today. Yeah, fans <laughs> definitely a big key to it. But um, but as it goes back to saying, at the end of the day, is if they can finish it. I mean, I, I don't know why I keep saying mm-hmm. that. I said the best few times here. But I think that's the biggest thing with them. And I feel like I, I think I think the biggest game we saw that, that play, especially with the fans, was was the Michigan State game. Mm-hmm. I guys are to pay attention how close and how intense that game was. Oh yeah, and I always think about. I mean, the fans were into it. You could tell we tell our players were into it. Obviously, it wasn't the outcome we all wanted, but it was like that was the type of energy like I want to see like almost every game. I want to see that type of enthusiasm. I want to see that like I want to see that like grit. You know, I want to see that mean green type of bulldog hockey that I've seen right. here the past few years here. <laughs> No, I definitely agree with you on that. And, like, you both, like, all three of you have made great points. Like, if we get that, get that going, I think, like, even next year, even I won't be here, I think they're going to be even better at hockey. I think Bob was talking about how he has a lot of freshmen and sophomores they will get even more PT next year because the senior class isn't too big. So I think the state of Bulldog hockey is getting back. And since that's our only Division One sport, hopefully they can start winning, like, how football, basketball, soccer, <laughs> and volleyball. Because like, it is a winning culture. I was 17 – Sports teams at Fair State, most like we majority of the time we win. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I mean Frozen Four is is that's where we want to be. We've been there before. That's mm-hmm. that's basically the ceiling, right? Because I mean we've been there only four or five years ago, and the fact of it is is we've had slippery slope since then. And I think this community just hasn't really recovered from that. I mean we've had some great hockey, but it's just not always been to that caliber. And I think that's just the hard thing to go from getting to that final stage and you're getting so close you come up a little bit short and every year it kind of gets farther and farther away it's just kind of a desperate feeling but i mean we're going to have an opportunity i mean we beat this team before back on before the break started and i mean one thing that bowling green doesn't do great job of is winning face-offs and that's something that if we can use to our advantage and get more opportunities we're going to be in good shape because we've had some quality quality shooting performances the last two games we've done a great job of that especially last weekend after rebounding from st thomas so it's going to be fun six o'clock on saturday seven o'clock tonight on friday you can find all that information out on fairstatebulldogs.com anyway moving over now basketball was on the hardwood last night in saginaw and we got a split between the women's and the men's we'll start on the men's side with the win 82 71 against a good saginaw valley team this team really played us hard back at home when back here at wink just a couple weeks ago and, I mean, similar game tonight. It was close all the way through. But, I mean, our shooting just really takes us places when we get hot. It's just something else to see. Yeah, like Walt, um, he got obviously mentioned in the top 100 players for small division basketball. I hope he can win that. Dorian's been playing good. Lee is one of the best shooters in the country. Ben Davidson's been having a lot of production off the bench. And now we sit at 15-3. and three. We're number 17 in the country. I think we can have a run. We're 10-0 in GLIAC, if I'm not um, mistaken. So right now we run the GLIAC. I mean, I think like in all sports, soccer won, volleyball, football, you know, basketball has a potential of winning. So I think we keep this momentum. Basketball, we're better than what we were expected. I think a lot of people didn't think 
we would be that good coming in the season unranked. And now we sit at 17th in the country. Big win on the road. Obviously, last night against Saginaw, we beat Grand Valley on the road. Has one of the best scores in the country. So I think like if we keep this momentum going, we'll definitely, definitely uh, keep moving forward in the right direction. Yeah, I think def- I think that's what's definitely been up and at them. I think they've already shown a lot this year, um, and I I agree with you too. I mean, I think they got a really good shot. I mean, they've they've shown. I mean, throughout the season, you see some of the games, especially with him Wade, how well he's been playing this year. And I I, I agree with you too. I think he's, I he has a win this year. I feel like he's going to. Yeah. I mean, just the way he's been playing. But no, I mean, unless I mean, I think they they got a good shot in the good tournament here. And I mean, I I didn't see too much of last night's game, but I tell you what though, I, just from seeing the stats and seeing how they looked, I mean. They're gonna have a good season this year. I mean, I, they, they're gonna make a strong, strong run. Yeah, honestly, coming into the season being unranked at first, now we're 17th in the nation. That's huge. I mean, obviously, we're slept on at the beginning of the season in that, and now we're proven that you know we're a real team. We should be respected. You know that it's not gonna just be easy walkover game when you go come to Wink or we go to your home arena. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. this team has done – that's a great point. I mean, we've won a lot of away games this year. I mean, early on in the regional games, the exhibitions, we were kind of sluggish a little bit, which that tends to happen. But, I mean, since then, I mean, we've been lights out in conference play, still a perfect record, keep the streak alive. I mean, obviously that's not what they're worried about, but that's what the media will be worried about for four weeks or so or whatever it may be. And that's fine, but whatever. But yeah. Lee Higgins led the, lead, or led the team in scoring with 23. It was 3 of 5 last night from 3. What a night from Lee. You can check out our interview with him as well as Dorian Louie who had 14 points and 11 rebounds just casual double double just casual <laughs> um, you can check that out in the feed below I had a great conversation with them about this team and this season coming up uh, Walt has mentioned Travis had 21 points as well we had Vayas Grizzulis with 7 rebounds off the bench then Davidson had 6 Jimmy Scholler 6-5 and 4 great stat line for him and just a, a great overall game. I mean, really got the job done on the road against a tough team in a tough environment. Uh, we out-rebounded them. We had better um, possession of the ball. I mean, the turnovers, we'd obviously like to be down a little bit because, you know, we have a lot of opportunities that are that are just left unturned when we turn the ball over sometimes, and that's kind of unfortunate to see. But, I mean, we're knocking down shots. I mean, we can get one of the – I wouldn't say, like, necessarily one of the streakiest, but, I mean, when we get hot – it's almost impossible to stop. And I've never seen a team that just gets that hot that quickly. And I know we talked to Lee and Dorian about this, like how much they practice those sort of those sorts of situations for especially deep ball shooting. Just to be able to score at will and in and in bunches and it just keeps flowing. The momentum just keeps running and it's incredible to see. But looking forward to seeing how this team will do coming up. I believe that they will be playing I believe it's Wayne State this weekend. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's Wayne State. Wayne State. They will be down in Detroit at three o'clock. Yeah. You can check that out as well. As well as the women will also be down there. They also played Saginaw last night. Came out on the on the losing end in a tough contest, seventy to sixty two, the final I mean, Saginaw was a great team. We ended up beating them at their our, our place. They ended up getting back on their home turf. But, I mean, still, they played a good game. It was contested all the way through. Uh, I mean, just looking back at the, the stats and everything that we just kind of – they just really picked it up in the, that last four, that last ten minutes there in the fourth quarter, and they just they just ran away with it, despite it being such a close game. Yeah, like I remember from the Saturday game, I think that was January eighth, where we worked. Uh, we were down the whole game, then came back and won. And this is kind of like a similar situation. We've been very good this year. The women, like they've like had a good uh, GLIAC record, but. Like, we got to depend a little bit on Adriana Anderson. I know she's like does like a bulk of the scoring, Zoe Anderson as well. And, um, Caden, uh, who's also a really good outside shooter, but sometimes when we're not flowing um, hot from like three, that kind of like kind of in a way dictates the outcome of the game. So Saginaw is a very good team. They're one of the best teams also in the GLIAC with Grand Valley, um, who's also ranked pretty high. So I mean, I still think it's open for us. I know it was a tough loss last night, and you know they played them very close. But um, I think the girls will have a bounce back game. They still have a, a winning record. We're believe I believe we're over eight games over five hundred. So hopefully. Uh, they continue like to get back in the winning side of things moving forward. Yeah, I mean, this team, I mean, you mentioned uh, Mallory McCartney. She had 17 points in this game as well. I mean, we have so many different scores on this team, and that's one. I know that there was um, Samantha Krause did not play in that game last night, and she provides a huge spark for the team off the bench too. So, I mean, didn't see a whole lot of, of bench play in this game just because of the tight outcome that we ended up seeing on the score sheet. So, I mean, right now I would agree with you that there's some times where 
Um, we'll definitely see one one player get hot, but getting them all hot at the same time has been kind of the hit or miss so far with this season. I mean, we've seen it in, in big games. I mean, Lake State, I mean, when we scored 90, that was definitely one of them. And, I mean, really the, the second half of when we played Saginaw the first time. I mean, we were down big early on. It mm-hmm. did not look good, and then the, they, the girls just really got it together, and they played a great game. But, I mean, just a small bump in the road. I mean, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for them for the Islands back, including this weekend against a team that um, they know they could beat. They know they can beat Wayne State, and they they ended up getting us the first time. But that was one of the, the, worst, the worst games we played that year, and I know that the girls said that. They really wish they could have that game back. So now they're going to have the opportunity to bounce back on Saturday. So that game, I believe, will start at 1 o'clock. Yep. And the thing is about, like, the close losses, it's only because of, like, bad shooting. The fact that the games are still close when you're playing, like, terror, like, not, well, I'm not going to say terror because, you know, we're biased <laughs> towards Ferris, but, <laughs> yeah. like, like the fact that you can still win those games shows it preaches a lot of your ability to win how talented you are that your worst performance is really only an eight point loss so I think they'll definitely bounce back and I definitely think the boys we beat Wayne State by over 30 last time here and you made a point about Lee like Ben Davison said he told me that Lee is one of the best shooters he's ever seen especially when he gets hot so I mean, the boys, I think they're going to continue to roll. I think the girls will bounce back, too. I expect a big game from Adriana. And they kind of go as she goes. Um, she was obviously a preseason All-American, so I'm excited uh, to see those games. I know I think Rob Bentley, be, him and Sandy will be covering those in Detroit, so that'll be fun. Yeah, absolutely. You can check those out, and all the live stats will be on there as well. I believe the game will also be – I think they'll also be broadcast on Sunday 97.3 for all the, the locals. Yep. You yep. can get it on the radio, the play-by-play with Rob Bentley, Sandy Golson. Those guys do a great job. Um, the only thing that's better than Rob Bentley and Sandy Golson on a basketball call, Rob and Sandy Golson on a football call. That's yeah. the only thing different. <laughs> I promise you that. But they, they do a great oh, job, sure. and we appreciate yeah. all the work that they do. But finally, to wrap up the Ferris State Sports Report, track will be in action this weekend down at Allendale. We're actually leaving today um, for a Saturday, Friday meet. Um, we'll be traveling down there for um, what has been labeled as the – Bill Klinger Classic. It's a, it's a tongue twister Ooh, to say, a, but uh, cool they, they like to name after um, some notable people, which I understand, but um, definitely doesn't make it easier for us trying to, to, to discuss <laughs> them. Um, Going to be good. Um, I'm excited for a lot of this team. I know um, there's been some team members that have started to come back from, I mean, we had a little bit of a COVID protocol situation last week, especially on the women's side, so having them back will be huge for this meet as well. Um, we've been seeing a lot of improvements out of the, um, the field events and the sprint, so, I mean, they're, they're really looking upward. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this team does, and this is going to be a pretty competitive race. I think this one's going to be slated as one of the most competitive races we've had so far this season, just based off of the teams and the heat sheets I've seen so far. So it's going to be a fun one. You can follow all of that information out on, on Twitter, I believe, at the on the Ferris track page as well, as it will be online as well with live results and more. All the links are on there. You can go check it out. Just a shameless plug for the website because it literally has everything. I literally get <laughs> lost on this thing trying to find everything. So, But that's the Ferris stage sports report uh we will translate right over into the nba all-star break the voting is in and guys there's one starter on the list in the west pool i think everybody's a little <laughs> confused about I got an idea. what are we thinking about andrew wiggins <laughs> Hey, I'm actually excited. A lot of people, my friends think I'm a troll because they just call me Skip Bayless, but this is true. And Steph Curry makes his teammates better. Like, Steph, like Andrew Wiggins, they kept saying it was a bad trade, trading D'Angelo Russell for Andrew Wiggins, and now he's an all-star starter. This man is shooting over 43% from three. He's been putting up big production. The thing is, they're 35, no, they're 36 and 12, and Wiggins, Draymond, Clay, and Steph haven't all played a single game yet together. So that's a testament to how great Wiggins has been. He definitely deserves it. Obviously, Steph's an all-star starter, too, so you got two Warriors, but Wiggins has been amazing. I mean, John Morant, it's definitely cool to see LeBron, this is his fifth year of being all-star captain, so, I mean, hey, I'm very happy for Wiggins. I think it's well-deserved. I don't know how you guys feel, though. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, Wiggins is definitely well-deserved. I mean, how he's been, his performance with the Warriors have been amazing this year. I mean, I've I think the only biggest controversial is what about Booker though? Do, you, do we think he deserves to be in there? I mean, yeah. that's the big thing I've been hearing around here, and I'm back and forth on it. I mean, yeah, I feel like he definitely does deserve it, but the same way, like numbers that Wiggins has, has been putting up and how well they've been performing, I'm like, they deserve it. You know? yeah, I mean, Wiggins averaging 18 points a game, uh, four rebounds, and two assists. Like that's that's those are solid numbers. But are they starter numbers in the All Star game over Devin Booker that had leading the Phoenix Suns? 
I mean, uh, you, you do make a great point. Nick. I just think, like, just because, like, how consistent Wiggins has been, I understand his numbers are kind of average. I just think because they're the two seed right now, I know the Suns are the one seed. And just, like, his role, is, like, a lot of people thought he was going to be on the back end of, you know, Steph and Clay, but he's really has sometimes been a second or one option because Steph has had a terrible, you know, month of basketball this past month. A lot of people saying his shooting numbers look like tour dates because, like, <laughs> like 7, 20, you know, stuff like that. But, um, <laughs> but, um, so I think Wiggins has been a big part of their winning. So, Nick, you do make make a good point numbers wise I would go with Booker because I am a fan of Booker but I just think the overall team winning especially the Warriors not making the playoffs last year leads to but Booker has been amazing he had a 40 piece the other night so yeah. you can't go wrong with that yeah I don't think there's any question that Andrew Wiggins deserves to be an all-star I don't think that's I don't think that's the debate that everybody's upset about it's just is he starting caliber in the all-star <laughs> game Nick you made a great point I mean I personally was looking at Devin Booker in the spot I mean he's averaging 25 six and four this year so far I mean those have been astounding numbers best team in in basketball right now record wise so that that's really hard to pass up when you're talking about the best players in the National Basketball Association as of now for the all-star caliber criteria so it's really hard for me to see that. I mean, I have all the respect for what the Warriors have been able to do. I mean, especially holding down the four while Clay's been rehabbing. And, I mean, now that he's back, that team's oh, yeah. going to be exciting when it comes mm-hmm. playoff time. But, I mean, you, you just got to you just gotta really think, like, is this kind of more of a biased starting lineup it's now that we oh. got fan voting back, <laughs> Travis? I don't know. It, well, I... I kind of got to agree with you on that because, like, a lot of people thought LeBron wouldn't be the captain for a fifth year. Some people thought Curry, but LeBron has been balling. I know sometimes <laughs> I get called a LeBron troll, but he, he is amazing. He deserves it. But I would say a little bit of the fan voting, but uh, some of it has been realistic. Like, John Moran, who's in the MVP conversation, who had a 40-piece the other night as well, and that game got taken off national television. He had 41 in response to it. So I think, like, he's well-deserving of it. So it's definitely new. Like, when you look at the East, I know we'll get into that. DeMar DeRozan, he's a starter. So Mm -hmm. I think the fans did, in a way, get it right because a lot of the guys who are starting have been putting up amazing numbers so far. Yeah, I mean, I I agree, too. I mean, mean, it can be definitely pretty biased, you know, especially, I mean, I personally think Curry should got the captain for the West. I'm just going to put that out there. I feel like he deserved it the way way he's been playing right now. I think we're saying right now. I think he's the MVP of the season. I think I'm just gonna put it out there, and that's my big vote. But I, I just think it's clear as day, and I'm just so I can see a little bias with it, with, especially with Brian being the guy the rest few years here. But I mean, overall, I mean, it's a pretty well balanced like starting. Like you know, I don't always really, I don't have many I don't have any problems with it. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't have really many problems with the starters I picked. Um, going off Austin, though, I think definitely Curry uh, should have been captain of the West team, just looking at uh, the two teams. I mean, the Lakers are going to be fighting at the tail end of the year, it seems like, to get into the playoffs right. and to avoid the playing games, while Curry has turned around the whole Golden State Warriors from last year to this year. Oh, and, obvi- and obviously, like, they're healthier now from last year. They got clay they got clay back and all that. And it seems like everything's clicking for the Warriors to make a solid run in June and uh, go win another championship. Yeah, I th- I think like I mean, you mentioned like some of the MVP candidates. I mean, Steph's definitely up there. I believe just as of this morning, I think he's second, just trailing Giannis mm-hmm. in the MVP yeah. odds yeah. right now. I mean, and Embiid is climbing ferociously up that list as well as the Joker is always going to be in that conversation. So I mean, the problem or I shouldn't say the problem um, with the the captain selection is is it really kind of based more off of the fandom or is it more based off of who the best players are in the league at the moment because i mean hypothetically then point. we should have Giannis and steph being it selecting in the draft in the two weeks instead of having lebron and kd now obviously would you rather want that ratings wise kd and lebron <laughs> yeah probably yeah. yeah but i mean the fact of it is is we haven't really been told how that works like i mean we just kind of been like yeah it's it's lebron and kd and it's like okay for what reason it is lebron and kd it's like okay you just said that again it's like wait what's 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 the reasoning behind that i think that's where a lot of the general public is like wait why why are these guys doing it every year but in the reality it's a tv ratings thing and that's really what it comes down to oh brandon you're completely right because like a lot of it's just branding and they you can market lebron and like if you say lebron and kevin durant that's going to draw their fans you know mm-hmm. millions, to everyone yeah, yeah to millions of people so i mean i got to give lebron that he's definitely great at marketing but i just think like 
I think the reason why Steph wasn't picked is because lately he hasn't been playing as well. Even though he's had a great overall season, I think they're going off the last 10 games what LeBron's doing. Even though it's not resulting in wins, the fact he's getting 38 and 7 on over 50% is, I mean, in year 19, that is crazy. So I got to give him that. But I think it should have been like Giannis and Steph. I would love to see Giannis do it because they're the reigning champs. He's the reigning finals MVP. I still think he overall is the best player in the league because he won without a super team. Drew Holiday and Chris Milton are good players, but they're not. AD or like any you know right. like top yep. five in their position so I think I would have loved to see Steph and I really thought Steph would get it because Steph's one of the most likable play- he's like kind of like the Patrick Mahomes of the NBA like <laughs> everybody loves Steph you might hate his team but it's hard to like to watch him play and not be like oh my god he did something we never seen again so I think it is like a little bit of bias but I think the drafting is going to be injuring- I mean, interesting I think LeBron whoever gets the first pick I think is getting Giannis then uh, Steph that's what I think yeah well said yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, I think with how Brandon was saying, I mean, how does this kind of voting kind of work out here? I mean, how much influence does the fans really have on this kind of voting, and how much input does the rest of it have? And I think, I mean, yeah, I think obviously LeBron's a great marketer. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, I feel like you do a little bit the same for Curry as well, though. I mean, I feel like you can still market him just Agreed. just as good. I mean, obviously LeBron's gonna be a top dog for the NBA, but I just feel like that. You need some time. You need some type of change, some type of shift away from it. Because I mean, you talk about say he's at year, year nineteen. I mean, a few more years. How much longer do you think he's gonna be able to go here, and who, who they're gonna shift to? True. Uh, I think he's gonna play till Bronny gets in the league. I think, <laughs> I think that's really his goal, though. Like he he says that, so like. That's what I think. Well, my thing, though, too, is, like, Brown's getting old, Curry's getting old. All these guys we're talking about right now are getting old. You know, who's going to be the guy to take over? Because if we're going to hold on to LeBron for the next three years till Bronny's in the league, you know, Curry's going to be up there in age, you know, and all that. And the way he plays is very safe, you know, especially for an older player. So he may be in the league for way longer than mm-hmm. expected. My thing, though, with the All-Star game is, like, speaking to Austin about some change, I wouldn't mind them just bringing back the old format where it's just East versus West, yes. where there's yes, no drafting. Yes. You know what? Bring back where they were, like, classic jerseys. You know, mm-hmm. not like the West versus, you know, the classic early 2000 type thing. Where they wore their, like, own jerseys. Yeah, 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 where yeah. they wore their own jerseys and that. Stuff like that. You know, it's like how they did the Rising Star game where yeah, it used to be yeah. freshman versus sophomore. Now it's, I think, like, USA versus World instead now. Mm-hmm. Like, they just need to switch some stuff up with it. It's getting it's getting old because it's the same thing. LeBron's been captain the last five years. If we go back to the East versus West, you know, we can avoid the captain, the draft pool, all that stuff and all that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think what everybody is kind of just, like, cons- like, it's just – it's the same thing every year, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously there there's a, there's initiatives put to change it. I mean, obviously Nick just mentioned some of them with the, the switching of how the Rising Stars games work and all mm-hmm. the that sort of thing. But, I mean, I think the the biggest part of like seeing the same players. I mean, obviously, like it comes right back to the fan voting because I mean, captains are the, the leading vote getters, and who's going to be voted for every year? based off of just name and alone it's gonna be those kind of guys yeah. so it's right. it's just hard to be like well maybe maybe it's somebody that should be like rated as the highest mvp vote that's now <laughs> that's gonna be all-star i mean if you want change i mean there's an idea right, right there and the thing is to nick's point why he's right kevin durant's not even playing he's right. like he hurt his knee he's literally gonna yeah. vote then he's not gonna play so like yeah that's like well, no, i gotta agree with nick because it's just like you gotta at least go with and don't get me wrong KD was having an mvp season before the injury but yeah you gotta absolutely. go like with a Giannis and stuff and plus like you can market those guys as well i, I honestly you really gotta be a troll if you don't like Giannis. Yeah, like, we're you know not we're not questioning that they're not all stars. Yeah. We're not questioning that they should be deserving of the honor to be captains. We're just like, okay, this is year five of the same thing. Like everyone's starting to snooze off right now. Like, exactly. what, do we need to change something again? But then we can't get too far off the rails because then again, like Nick said, like sometimes then now it's like we're to the new format and it's like you know the old was. Kind of nice. Not going to lie. Right. Maybe we yeah. can go back yeah. to that. And with LeBron missing last night, too, who even knows? I don't know what the variant of the injury is, but who knows? Yeah. You know, he might decide and be like, you know what? I'll I'll pick. I'll show up, but I'm not going to play in it just because, you know, he's getting to that point where he's older, probably wants to save his body because he's probably going to have to carry the Lakers into the playoffs. That is very true. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But um, just to mention, we kind of talked about 
Um, the captains, we didn't mention all the starters. LeBron, Nikola Jokic, Andrew Wiggins, Steph- Stephen Curry, and John Morant are the Western Conference starters. So the Eastern Conference, KD, Giannis, Joel Embiid, Trey Young, and DeMar DeRozan to round out the East. And I mean, based off of like surprises in this one, Honestly, the name that nobody probably knows about, I think, is the most clear and obvious in the Eastern Conference. DeMar DeRozan deserves to be an all-star starter, and you yeah. arguably oh. maybe a captain. I it, mean, he's played yeah. phenomenal this mm-hmm. year. He might be the MVP. The Bulls are the one seed in the East. Like, a lot of people thought when him, Levine, and um, Lonzo, like, they'll be a pretty good team, a playoff team, but now they've they might be a threat to make it out the East. So, like, DeMar has been – this is easily the best year of his career. I didn't. I think nobody outside Toronto really saw this coming. I mean, I right. just—he's been amazing. Like he should have maybe been a starter. I think he's probably more deserving as a starter than over Wiggins. But you no, know, Demar is definitely deserving of that. And the Bulls are going to make a run. Not, oh yeah, the Bulls are going to make a serious run. I feel like I mean, I Demar wasn't definitely deserves it. Definitely, I think definitely deserves it way more than the Wiggins or other guys. But they all deserve to be starters. But I think it goes down to I mean, just how well how well his team's been performing. I, mean, I feel like. I don't recall, but kind of go back to the little segment we were talking about the voting. I mean, I feel like that should make a little bit more of a base off of how well your team's performing, I'm, how well the team's been doing, performing, all that. I mean, you look at the Miami Heat. I mean, who? No, no Lowry, no Butler, no. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Yeah, I believe was it Butler was in like fifth in the voting, I believe. So he would have just missed. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you're right. Like. How much does team performance actually come in? None, because it's a complete van vote. And that's the thing is when we have the general public voting, I mean, on the All-Star, I mean, you could almost guarantee 33% aren't watching games. They're just like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I should vote for the All-Stars. Oh, yeah, who's been doing, uh, I mean, LeBron, yeah, he's been doing great. Uh, Jokic, yeah, he's, he's amazing. <laughs> but it's like, how many of them are actually watching the games? Because the ones that don't watch the game, they're like, why is DeMar DeRozan in here? But the ones that are watching the games are like, yeah, DeMar DeRozan should be the captain. That's what, that's what it comes down to. And just the fact of it is, is it's just a, uh, how much does team performance come into play? Also, I think that's a great point. I think, too, like, see, seeing how DeMar DeRozan changed that culture in Chicago. You know, obviously yes. he brought in Lonzo. Levine was already there. They just lost Caruso. I, I'm, I'm very interested. I I, I'm very interested to see how that you know affects the team because yeah. he was very key off the bench for that Bulls team, and I truly believe that they'll make a deep run. They can compete with the Nets easily, in my opinion. They honestly sleeper team for the finals right there. Ooh. Yeah, I, I like I it. I said they could possibly come out the East. I think like if they get by the Nets, or I think the the Bucks to me like when the Bucks are fully healthy, that'll be like the team to beat but the Bulls definitely are right and to go back on the fan voting like a lot of these people you are right don't even watch the game they just vote for like <laughs> I've seen people like Kyle Kuzma was like one of the lead, like Kyle Kuzma does not deserve it he's literally <laughs> averaging like under 17 points a game are we like, voting like fashion outfits or what are we, what are we saying, doing here well him and Westbrook yeah I don't know like they both got some horrific yeah. outfits sometimes yeah. but um uh. yeah like no I definitely gotta agree with that Cause some of the fans just like literally like one time there Steven Adams was one of the leading vote getters just because people just think he's so intimidating like I mean, it's funny. But it's like he should not be a leading vote getter, though. Could you imagine the Birdman in oh, that scenario? Oh, oh yeah. goodness gracious! Jesus. But I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm really interested to see who's going to be the the selections for Saturday night. Who's going to be in there for three point contest, dunk contest? I mean, the other two aren't as important, but I mean, I'll still be following those ones. But right. it just doesn't feel like we've had the same like atmosphere behind Saturday night as we used to. And I mean, that oh. kind of stinks because I mean. Dunk contests, three point contests, those are fun to watch. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it just stinks that it's really like just dropping in popularity. I mean, I feel like the last couple, uh, who was it, Aaron Gordon that got robbed? Oh, my God. Oh, you know, like, right, I feel right. like that's when like I gave up on it. You know, because I remember growing up, you know, wa- re watching the Vince Carter, you know, the Kobe Bryant, those classic dunk contests. And then, you know, you didn't get any hype around it till the Blake Griffin one. You know, mm-hmm, and true. did he jump over a car? He mo- he just jumped over the hood, to be honest with you. <laughs> he, he, did, he, he jumped yeah, over the hood. He it did. wasn't the whole car. <laughs> but still, though, you know, like before that, you know, you have those spans where I couldn't even tell you who was in it and who even won it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel true. like I feel like you don't get these big popular players. Like LeBron was never in it, you know? Um, Zion, whatever he's dealing with, you know, he would be fun to watch in the dunk contest. Mm-hmm. Ja, you know, get Ja, you know, you have to get all these young guys that can legit throw it down in the dunk contest to make it more exciting. You have to have bring star value, not these bench players like uh, Anthony Simmons. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah like you, guy. <laughs> you got to bring. Nobody knew he was. Guys exactly. Who five points a game in the dunk contest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you got to bring in star power to get people to actually want to watch. 
Yeah. No, Nick is definitely right. Because, like, the last one I remember watching, like, from start to finish, I think it was 2016, Aaron Gordon versus Zach Levine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just remember when Zach Levine brought out the Space Jam jersey. That, to me, is, like, my favorite dunk contest outside the Vince Carter and Kobe's because those are classics. But mm-hmm. since then, like, yeah, they haven't been. It's, like, all these unheard of guys. It's, like, a bunch of G League guys, like, <laughs> in the dunk contest that don't, like, you know, they barely get minutes, you know. They average more, like, points than minutes. It's, like, it's ridiculous. So, um... I think, like, I definitely want to see, like, the old school stuff. And, like, because the stuff we watched growing up, like, made it more exciting. The three-point shootout, stuff like that, too. So, and definitely in the three-point shootout, I would love to see, like, Booker, Steph, especially Clay now since oh, he's yeah. healthy. Mm-hmm. So, I think that will be fun. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you, too. I think I could kind of go off your guys' point there about a dunk contest. I mean, we want some, you know, faces we know, some faces we actually want to see, you know, especially these, especially during the week here, some crazy dunks. You see those top ten plays, like, where are these in the dunk contest? <laughs> and at least another thing, like, I kind of want to bring up you guys – but these, the, the amount of attempts they have. I mean, yeah. back then, you always get one, maybe two, really. You get right nice, you get nice one or two, maybe three, if you're lucky there, attempts at these dunks. These guys yeah. now are getting at least four or five. Or, that's I true. Mean, how I looked at it, I'm like, I first get one, maybe two attempts, and I mean, that's it. I mean, that's where you bring the Zazz and you bring like, the, the power. It's, for me as a fan, that's what I look for. I don't want to see multiple attempts over and over and see them kind of attempting, you know, the same really, you know, dunk that they're trying to get over. I think he was screwing up on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, going back to, like, Austin, like, if the guy didn't hit it on the first attempt, like, you're already giving it away. Yes. You know, you're, right. you're already teasing us, and yes. you gave it away, and now, like, oh, I'm not I'm not excited to see that yeah. now. Yeah, cut the cool factor in half every attempt, basically. <laughs> basically, you know, and uh, basically going back to, we could build, you can build stars with the dunk contest, the three-point contest. You know, get, you know, the younger guys, and obviously Zion and Ja already have a big following, but get these, you know, uh, younger guys that don't, are very good, but don't have that like following as a Zion in that, and you can build stars off that easily. That's true. Yeah, one hundred percent. But the fans got to be committed to that though, because they can't whine when they don't know who the players are. That means and you the just fans have to learn actually more. Know the sports. Right? Yes, we need <laughs> to. Exactly. We Not need those <laughs> things first. Watch some basketball. <laughs> it's actually pretty fun. But anyway, finally, moving out the show. NFL talk. Divisional playoffs are upon us. As well, some coaching hires. We'll get into those in a minute. But first of all, boys, I mean, we got to make our picks. Who's going to be representing in the Super Bowl? I mean, we got two good matchups this week. I'm so so excited. We'll start in the AFC. Bengals against the Chiefs. I mean, it's pretty obvious here who the favorite's going to be. But is there any chance for surprise? I got to go with the Chiefs. Um, You know, Patrick Mahomes is amazing. Like, with Brady, you know I'm a huge, you know, big Brady fan. But I think Mahomes is going to be the best quarterback for a long time now since Brady's on his way out. And the only person to... To Patrick Mahomes to lose to in the playoffs is Brady. I don't see him losing. I think he's going to beat Joe Burrow. They lost in Week 17. It was 34-31. And Joe Burrow's amazing. You know, take a team that only won two games last year when you tore your ACL to the AFC title game. It's going to be a great game. But I just don't see Mahomes losing at Arrowhead. He's thrown over. Tw- he's thrown 26 touchdown passes, only one interception. You know, that's insane. You know, this man's made four straight AFC title games. It's going to be close. But I gotta go with him because you still got Nicole Hartman, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, who made that big catch to set up the field goal so I, I think the Chiefs I don't really see them losing I think they win by uh, three touchdowns I'm not gonna lie oh, <laughs> I, oh. Wow. wow so so I know, I know it's a bit much but I just got it's, no. it's gonna hurt my heart saying this the Chiefs I think will pull it out mm-hmm. um right now though I think the Bengals will give them a game looking at the injuries in that you know we don't Tyron Matthews he been cleared yet you know, I think Chris Jones will have a huge game on that defensive line for the Chiefs just because we saw what the Titans could do to Joe Burrow. You know, I mean, that's a big, big factor because, you know, if Burrow gets time, Chase, look at look at Burrow's re- receiving core. Chase, Higgins, you know, he has some he has some studs on there. So if they can get sure. the ball moving with Joe Mixon in the mix and all that, they get that offense going, Chiefs defense is known pretty not to have some holes in it. So that could be a huge factor. But I don't think it's going to be a blowout like Travis is saying. <laughs> I think it's going to be a close game. See, I'm going to have to be the one guy. I'm going to go to sleep right here, guys. Yeah. I, think, I think the Bengals can pull this off. Okay. I mean, dude, they're hot right now. They're, they're playing exceptional, I mean, outstanding football right now. And I mean, and I think this throughout the season, this past season with Chiefs, that they can be have. I mean, I, I, I think you guys can all agree with this, but they've they've really never been the same ever since that Super Bowl loss, I feel like. Mm. Yep, I mean, ever true. since Super Bowl loss, like people teams have seen how to beat this team and how to play against them, especially how they can come against Tyreek. But, I mean, the one biggest thing that, for me, that comes to mind is yards allowed, and the Chiefs are 27th right now. 
I mean, I know it's, I know, you know, it's playoffs are different, you know, different setting, different atmosphere, but I mean, I just feel like, I, I feel like Bro's gonna pull it up. I feel like how well they've been playing, and I just see, I, yeah. I'm, okay. I would love that. I would love to see Joe Burrow in, in the Super Bowl. I mean, I think that would just prove to every NFL franchise that you don't have to take a five-year rebuild on the auto. Like, you can, it doesn't have to be that way. Because, I mean, this team, 4-11 last year with Burrow gone. So, I mean, that's that's just tough. So, uh, I mean, when I'm looking at this game, I'm looking at it being close. I'm not crazy like Travis saying three touchdowns. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm one troll. <laughs> yeah, I'm one troll. Uh, I'm, I'm right now, I don't want to say it, but I think I am going to go with Kansas City just because the Bengals beating them twice seems hard in my head. And, I mean, what I wanted to see from the Chiefs is I want to see – a game where they can actually get after the quarterback, and we haven't seen that a lot. The number one team that's going to be the most vulnerable in this playoffs to get pressured is the Bengals because oh, yeah. their yeah. offensive line is banged up. I mean, they gave up nine sacks to Burrow last <laughs> week. That alarms me a lot, and I mean, the poor guy just has no time back there. But I think this game's going to be close. I'm going to say Casey. I'm going to probably say. Around the same score as what they played back in January, I'll say it's going to be a little bit higher. I'll say 38-35. The Chiefs now win it by a field goal. So that'll be interesting. But move yeah. up and over. San Fran, L.A., the third time's the charm. Third meeting between these two teams this season, and it comes with a ticket to the Super Bowl on the line. This one's going to be tough. I mean, NFC West looks pretty stacked right now. Yeah, I think Stafford, um, he hurt my heart last week beating on my boy Brady, but um, I'm happy for him. I think this is Stafford's year. He's proving the narrative that he can win with guys around him. And a lot of like Detroit Lion fans knew if he had a team around him, he could do something. Mm-hmm. I mean, the throw he threw to Cooper Cup over Winfield, I mean, it pisses me off, but like that was just a beautiful <laughs> throw. And, like, you know, so... I, I got to go with Stafford. And plus, he's in a situation that Brady was in last year when the Bucks lost to the Saints twice and they played them in the playoffs. I just don't see Stafford losing three times to Jimmy G. Yeah. And, like, I think um, he's going to beat him. I think Cooper Cup's going to have another big game. I think it's going to actually be a close game because Jimmy G and the 49ers, they did show some fight last week against the uh, Packers. Nobody really saw that coming. So I think it's going to be a close game. I, I have Stafford in the – the Rams winning by at least a touchdown. All right, I'll take. The, I'll, I'm going to take the Rams. Uh, you know, we're going to get another home team for the Super Bowl this year. Um, you know, I just can't see Stafford losing this game. You know, with the team around him, Odell's been playing lights out. Cups already lights out. You know, Stafford. Stafford has that dog. You know, watching Sucks. coming from. You know, Michigan's going to be cheering for him. <laughs> you know, all Lions fans wanting to go get that ring in that. And I just can't see him losing. I can't. I I agree with uh, Travis. It's gonna be. I don't. I honestly. I could see it being like a blowout, like a 14, okay. 14 point game. Mm. I could just because how quick that offense can score. I mean, we've seen oh, yeah. we've seen mm-hmm. Stafford. I mean, he went, had what forty seconds to go downfield. Just <laughs> threw it up. Cup made the play. And yeah, I don't know. I can't see the 49ers stopping him. Yeah, that game still gives me nightmares a little bit. That for, <laughs> Hi, that bro, for, you're uh, a Brady Rams, guy, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, oh, my gosh. I thought we had it there for a second. I'm really – that was not a Falcons game, you know. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> but, you know, I, I agree. I think the Rams are going to pull this one off here. I mean, it's just – they are they have so much firepower on that offense, mm-hmm. dude. And that's, like, the one thing that from last from last week's game I really saw was, like, dude, it's like, who do you who do you cover? Who do you yeah, shut thanks. down? Do you take away cover? You leave – you see Odell go off, too. It's like, who, who do you – who do you – who do you cover? Who do you block? But and I think our big thing goes off too with the Rams is man, that defensive line, man. Like that Crazy. was our thing too. That was just insane. I mean, here, yeah, you, you could try, you could try a double team Donald all you want, but he'll still break through it. You still got Von Miller coming from the other side too, as long as well as with Floyd. And I mean that that defense is just ferocious. And nothing wrong, and nothing against the 49ers. They played a hell of a game against uh, the Packers and. They play way well, but I mean, I think we all can kind of agree there was there was a few hiccups that the Packers had, especially with special teams there, that I figured they would have you know yeah. cleaned up a little bit, or as well as with the weather conditions, I think they they probably would have pulled off that game. Yeah, and like one thing you gotta look at too, like when you're talking about Aaron Donald, he's made All First Pro Bowl team seven straight years. Like Aaron Donald is a beast. Like I mean, that's somebody I would never want to piss off in her life. But, um, <laughs> like, he, and plus, he can run like a four four. Oh like people God. think he's like this big guy, but he can like literally chase you down. When you talk about Von Miller, like the Rams team is 
they kind of give me like 2017 Golden State Warrior vibes when they add Kevin Durant just because they're stacked all around. Nick, you made a great point about Odell. He has six touchdowns in the last 10 games. Like Stafford, this is the most weapons he's really had since like a Calvin and Golden Tate. So I really don't see them like uh, losing this game. My thing, though, is do we see more Trey Lance this week? Because we didn't see him much in Green Bay, and we saw Jimmy G perform lights out. <laughs> you know, he could not throw. He had no, you know, I don't know if it was the pressure. I don't think so. It was more just like he just couldn't throw. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I, do we see more packages with uh, Trey Lance maybe coming in, doing a read option, just trying to switch it up? Because I don't know if you can win this game giving the ball to Jimmy G for, you know, Plus thirty five times throwing the ball. Oh yeah, true. But I, I mean, also too, we saw seen the Rams game last week as well. Is that they had such a huge lead and they, I mean, they almost blew it. I mean, mm-hmm. the big times with the fumbles. I mean, two I mean, fumbles are like that's one thing. Like I, that's why I feel it'd be a close game. I think it's going to be a three to seven point game there. But I mean, that's the one thing that look concerns with the Rams is if they get a lead on the 49ers, can they actually hold it and not let it slip away? I do think last week those, I mean, bias a bit against Brady, but it was just like, if only Brady could play defense. No, I'm just kidding. But like, <laughs> but like I just think that's it's a different fight. Like, Jimmy G, you make a great point. I think, like, with how bad Jimmy G is, honestly, they might, you just might see a lot of Debo Samuel. Like, last week, that's how they won the game. Like, Austin, we saw, like, Debo Samuel got that big conversion on third and seven, which set up the field goal. Mm-hmm. To win the game, so I, I gotta go with Nick because, like, unless Jimmy G does something we haven't seen, I know they made the Super Bowl two years ago, but I just don't see him beating Stafford, especially for a third time. Like, if he wins a third time, like, hats off to him. I, right. I just think that's tough to beat a team three times in the NFL in any situation. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna be a, f- a fun game nonetheless. I mean, just the fact that these two are playing for the third time, and I mean, they've been pretty, pretty solid games all the time, but. Uh, I mean, right now, I want to play contrarian and just take the 49ers just for sake of debate, but, <laughs> I mean, it's just hard to beat a team three times. I mean, it comes down to that. Are and we all unanimous? What? We're all unanimous? <laughs> Unfortunately, okay, we are all unanimous. unanimous. I, think, I, mean, I think it's a Michigan thing, too. Yeah. With Stafford. We all want to see Stafford win, let's be honest. No, uh, I, that's 100%. I'll say, I'll say it right up the top. I want Stafford to win and go to the Super Bowl and then beat the Chiefs. That would be amazing. But, no. I mean, in my <laughs> mind, okay, personally, I want to just – I either want to see the Niners play the Bengals or the Rams play the Chiefs. Like, I just want to see either of those matchups. I want a complete favorite or underdog matchup. Mm-hmm. And I'm right now, based off of what I've seen – like the 49ers defensive line is going to be uh, could be an X factor in this game if they can get after Stafford. I mean, especially mm-hmm. I mean the running game has been a little slower the last couple of games with Akers and Michelle. But I mean, I just really I mean just what we were talking about, like to having the fact that Debo is going to probably come into this game. I mean, he's going to be healthy, but how healthy really is he after right. after the beating he took <laughs> in the first two playoff games? I mean, that guy's a warrior, but. I just don't know how much that because Jimmy Garoppolo's had success against some all right secondaries, but I mean he struggled against Packers last week. Now he's going to face the Rams, mm-hmm. and that's yeah, a, that's really. a significant oh. uptick in the secondary. So I think the Rams are going to pull this one out, and I think this is going to be the year for Stafford to win. Uh, I think score thirty to twenty one. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow. So wow. there's our picks for the division round. Don't pick, or I should say, don't bet on them unless we win. Then it's all. Then it's all. Let's <laughs> give credit. Uh, anyway, finishing out the show, head coaching vacancies are up for grabs, and some of them now are open that we probably weren't expecting a week ago. And one of those being Sean Payton is now out of yeah. New Orleans, and I mean there are rumors spreading around on where he might be going eventually, but. I mean, the fact is now the Saints are looking at a situation now where they're planning on going the next season with one guarantee almost, and now goodbye. See you later. <laughs> it's interesting. Like, Sean Payton, this is actually a big take, but I think he could wind up in Dallas. Like, I could wow. see I could see Jerry Jones getting rid of Mike McCarthy and Sean Payton, especially with his pedigree. I know he only has one ring, but he's been in the postseason a lot. So I think he could do that, but also a guy who can fill in the Saints position. This is another wild card. I would love to see Jim Caldwell get a chance. I thought mm-hmm. he was a really good coach in Detroit. Sadly, it didn't um, all work out, but he's a guy who has a winning record, and he also took Peyton Manning to a Super Bowl, so I would like to see that. Well, one thing with Sean Payton, though, Saints, Saints still have him for three years on the books, so if Dallas wants to make a move, they're going to have to you know, acquire him, and that's probably giving no draft picks, which Jerry Jones is crazy enough to do mm-hmm. for a coach because yeah. he thinks that he can win. He, this is the 90s, and the Dallas Cowboys are <laughs> still the greatest team alive when they're they haven't proved nothing yeah. this in the last decade and that um 
I, I'm scared too because I'm hearing rumors that Aaron Glenn, the DC in Detroit, is uh, one of the front runners. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, after this year, you know, I feel like we need to keep that staff in Detroit, you know, connected just to rebuild that franchise. But also, I've been hearing, though, the Bucks, OC, and DC, Todd Bowles and Leftwich are front runners too, which. Yeah. I think that comes down does Bra- is if Brady leaves, I feel like that will definitely have an impact. You know, they're definitely gonna one of them's probably gonna head out for a co- head coaching job. Oh, I think if Brady leaves, that whole thing's gonna just. I think they're gonna just split up. It's gonna break off. But no, that was a big thing. I mean, I was shocked to hear about it at first. I at first I thought it was just like a joke. One of those like little memes you'll see on like Twitter or something like that. <laughs> He's and gone. I, I was yes. like, wait, what? I was like, come on now. But no, I mean. I, I'll be shocked. I mean, I think I think we won one of the corners from outside from the Bucks. I think one of them is going to be leaving this year. I think one of them is going to go to Saints. As much as I don't want to see that, especially as the Braves yeah. fans are rivals here, but I, <laughs> but I they they got. I mean, especially with Todd Bowles, he's got a lot of freaking offers going around here, mm-hmm. and I feel like I I like him with the Saints a bit. I do. As weird as it sounds, I do like that kind of his position with the Saints. I feel like it'd be a good fit for him. But no, I was shocked with it, and especially I think the biggest. Um, Problem. I think the biggest thing it ha- that's going on with them is the gas space now. Yeah. I mean, now you got seventy four million here now with Breeze and Payne alone. It's like, what? What are you gonna do here now? What? Who are you gonna go after? Who are you gonna try to, you know, build this team better and try to compete here? Yeah, I mean, the I know the Dallas rumors. I mean, I mean, Peyton was there from 03 to 05 in that organization, and I think they would have definitely preferred to have hired him over eventually going to Wade Phillips, which then ended up into the lap naturally of Jason Garrett that every Cowboys fan now hates with their guts. But, right. <laughs> I, I mean, you're looking at Sean Payne, I think. I mean, the sincerity of some of the things he said, I think there are some things where, I mean, you've been a coach now for 15 years. I mean, that's taken time away from family. That's taken time away from everything that you might want to do in life. And, I mean, coaching is just a, it's just a huge ask time-wise. And I think he's kind of realizing that. I mean, now with Drew gone, things are different, and I think he's starting to realize that to its fullest, mm. that things are going to get a little difficult here having to navigate the Jameis Taysom situation. <laughs> and now, I mean, you're potentially going to not have Mike Thomas next year. I mean, there, there's all these sort of things, and I mean, obviously now it would on paper is like, yeah, if you're going to leave, now's the time to leave before it might end up just blowing up. So, mm-hmm. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, you mentioned... Like, we're looking at Bucks coordinators. I mean, I'm probably going to agree with Austin. I think that there's a chance that one of them goes. And, I mean, Brady's going to have a huge part in that because, I mean, who want to stick around on a Brady team? I mean, yeah, come right. on, that's <laughs> obvious, right? Exactly. But, um, I mean, obviously it doesn't matter his age, but... I think Jim Caldwell deserves a job. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. his I think his rap is getting thrown under for when he was let go from Detroit. And th- don't get me wrong, I think that move sh- should have happened if I would have changed it back and said should I should we have taken Caldwell away? The basis off of where we were at as a franchise, we wanted the next step. I think that made sense. I mean, Patricia was just the worst hire we've ever seen in NFL mm-hmm. history almost. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just a frank fact, but that Jim Caldwell deserves a job for what he was able to do there. It's just we kind of our our ownership got very very selfish, and that that's a, frankly what one of the biggest things that happened with that move, and that that's the fact of why he was gone. So, mm-hmm. but he's done some great things. I mean, obviously the Jacksonville jobs gonna be interesting to see who that takes, and I mean the green the Green Bay OC jobs now available now that Hackett's going to Denver, <laughs> mm-hmm. which I mean, not gonna lie, that's suspicion right there of yeah. you know, <laughs> and that's they why want, they want Aaron Rodgers in Denver, that's, which is a di- which is not a good idea. Also, no. that's why I think like to go back on your Caldwell point, he went thirty six and twenty eight in Detroit. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people don't have success with the Lions at all, so I think that's why he deserved. And plus, we fired him when he had a winning record. Like, I just <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought that was like ridiculous. But to the Aaron Rodgers thing. I think, Austin, you do make a good point about uh, you and Nick about both about the offensive coordinators leaving. But if Brady leaves, there's already been suspicion Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers would be a target for the Bucks. Like, if Bruce Arians could somehow get one of them, because Aaron Rodgers more than likely, I don't know what it is, he's either going to do Jeopardy or play football next year. One, like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, yeah. one, one of the two. Like, 100%. I, just, I, I don't see him in Green Bay, so... If I'm the Bucks and Brady like gives you a heads up that he's not coming back, I think they can keep that unit if you can get a Rodgers or Russell Wilson. Obviously, that depends on the cap space. But if Rodgers goes to Denver, that'll be interesting. Him and Mahomes play twice a year, so that's interesting. Not only him and Mahomes, but him and Herbert, Ooh, and oh yeah, Herbert. potentially Russell Wilson in Vegas. 
Could oh, you yeah, imagine that's that? That's true, too. He takes over for Derek Carr? Yeah. Could you imagine that? That'd be a crazy well, division. So speaking of Vegas, they just uh, they just requested to get uh, the OC of New England. What's yeah. his name? Josh uh, McDaniels. Josh McDaniels. Yeah, yeah. and yes. when is he going to leave? That's my thing. I think <laughs> Belichick honestly told him, like, once I retire, this is all you. There has to be something under the table sure, like he, that. He deserves a head coach. You're he, definitely right about he that. He should have been gone. He was going to go to Indy, then the plane turned around, oh, yeah. you know, and all that <laughs> stuff happened. Like, there's something going on in New England where, like, they promised him so much stuff or they're paying him money under the table that we don't know about to keep him because he should have been fair. long gone, you know, five years ago. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You yeah. know? And if it's like, now it's like, why doesn't Eric Bieniemy have a job too? Like yeah. that's the same oh, scenario. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, it's like it, right. there's got to be something going on that's leaving because those guys are overqualified to be in the candidacy for a head coaching position yeah. at any sort of team that is hiring right now. I mean, especially Jacksonville. I mean, holy smokes, <laughs> what is that franchise doing? But I mean, yeah, I, it's just hard. Like you see all these available. I mean. There, there's rumors like I mean, with Balky now as the GM of Jacksonville, that there's that connection there. So I, I think there's a lot of different places that we could see guys go. I mean, Eberflus to the Bears, I think, just doubles Bear. down on the fact that it's defense first. Let's get back to where we were a couple years ago, which I know some people are not happy about. But I mean, the bottom line is this: now, who is going to be the guy that's going to be shaping Justin Fields? It's not Matt Eberflus. I, He's a defensive guy. I don't like that hire. I think they should have went office minded just because Justin Fields is your future. You know, look what happened to Trubisky. Obviously, Trubisky was, you know, terrible. I mean, the Bears <laughs> blew it. They could have had Watson or Mahomes, you know, in that draft, but they blew yeah. it. Um, I think you, like, uh, you can't you can't put defense first with that because I mean Max getting older that defense is older it's not 2015 2016 when they had that great defense mm-hmm. you have to have an offensive minded hopefully you can bring an OC in that's really good that can help you know Fields you know span his game out you know make him better make you know make him read defenses better make sure he can limit them mistakes and turn into that franchise quarterback the Bears have needed for the last you know ten years since Jake Cutler left. That's definitely true because, like, I like the hire just on the aspect of it helps the Lions for our division. Oh, but, for sure. But, yeah. but um, I definitely agree with your point. It's not a good hire for them because if Fields is your future, you need an offensive minded guy. Sean Payton or Jim Caldwell, even Eric, um, I just don't see him leaving Kansas City just because they have Mahomes, but yeah. he would have been a good fit for, uh, for the Bears because that's the only way they're going to turn around because they obviously – put all their chips on Justin Fields because they want him to be the future. And the defense, I, I got to agree with Nick, is they, they actually did have a Super Bowl defense, Cleo Mack, all these other guys on defense. But what do they have to show for? Because you have Mr. Trubinsky who couldn't put, like, <laughs> nothing up. Right. So, like, I just think uh, as far as a Lions fan, I think it's good because you know, we have to see them twice a year. <laughs> but overall, like, they're not helping Fields. And yeah. I mean, you look at some of the people that they, they've been interviewing. I mean, you're talking Jim Caldwell, of course. You're talking – I mean, they they hired they were looking at Brian Dable like hardcore <laughs> for a while there, and everyone was like, "Yes, we did." Uh, oh no, no. it's super no, it. So it's it's tough, but I mean, I, you had a lot of offensive minded guys in there. I mean, the Doug Peterson one, I just laughed at. But, uh, I think there's definitely that feel in Chicago of you know, it's like we need a guy for Fields. I mean, that's just the bottom line, and it was just really hard to to see that they weren't going in that direction, but. They got to get somebody in there to. They they got to get somebody in there. I I mean they're they're looking at potentially making an offensive change. It's just hard for me to see. It's you take this huge risk in the draft and now you're not gonna support it. Kind of a thing. Sure. It's just really tough. I don't know. It's I I don't know how I feel about this move yet. Jacksonville would be smart if they get Leftwich. He played there. Plus, look what he's been able to do with Brady. He learns. He learned from Brady, and who do they have at quarterback? They have Lawrence, yes. and he needs help. Yeah. Yes. No offense. Honestly, I don't believe the hype in him. I I said it when he was coming into the draft. I don't think he was going to be that good. He kind of proved the narrative. Obviously, we've seen uh, other Hall of Fame quarterbacks like Peyton Manning have a terrible rookie year and bounce mm-hmm. back and become the greatest of all time, one of the greatest of all time. Right. But. You know, does that come down to coaching? So if they can, if Jacksonville can somehow get Leftwich to leave uh, Tampa Bay, even if Brady stays in that, that could have a huge, huge impact on Lawrence's career. Because the Bears should have done what Jacksonville's kind of doing. Let's find a guy to help our 
star quarterback, our franchise quarterback that we just put so much money into. Right. Yeah. Honestly, that's true because I really thought uh, to go on your point about Trevor Lawrence. I, I think I thought Mac Jones was the best quarterback in that draft. Like not no. just because he's with Belichick. I think Mac Jones is just a winner. He's really good. So I didn't really buy the hype too much on Trevor Lawrence because he was great in college, but. He just kind of like I just feel like he might be a bust because he's not used to like losing in. He he still has time to turn things around, but he doesn't really give me a Joe Burrow type vibe or like a Mahomes like you come in and just like start down here. Even Lamar Jackson, who sadly missed a postseason mainly because they had COVID related issues. So um, also that's one thing I did want to bring up too. Antonio Brown, I don't know if he's just trolling or his C, or his CTE, but he literally put a picture of him with a Ravens jersey on. I think that would be interesting. Him and Lamar Jackson, he also said on a show he wants to play with them. I just think, like, I know this is off topic talking about AB. I just think, I don't know if that's going to be a good fit of him in Baltimore because he literally got a ring with Brady and called out Brady. I feel like by week six he will call Lamar Jackson a running back. Then they'll be like, then they'll be like stop the press, stop the press. Like, so I think AB, I hope he finds a team, though, next year. I do say that. You see, now going into that a little bit on your topic there, I, I think is how many more chances do you really give the guy, though? I mean, he had multiple True. chances. You had with the True. Steelers, you had with the Raiders, you had with the Patriots, you had with the Bucks, and now, you know, like – do you, do you trust him with the Ravens? Like especially how you're saying with, True. with you know how he called out Brady. I mean you me especially know how we call him, <laughs> you know our goats. But uh. it's like, do you think he's gonna give that same kind of respect to Lamar, who you know is still young and still out to prove himself? That's true. My my thing though. Aaron Rodgers to Pittsburgh, calling it right now, just because oh, with, with, yes. with Big Ben gone, obviously you're not Mason Rudolph can't throw the ball <laughs> uh haskins has a little uh strip club problem <laughs> so in you know mike tomlin he's a phenomenal coach because look at the yeah, quarterbacks he's had mm-hmm. when yes. when roger i uh, meant when uh rossberger has been out to keep a positive record never have a losing season if he gets aaron Rodgers, and another thing too adams is off the books this year in green bay he's a yep. free agent he might so follow. Yep. he mm-hmm. might follow and Pittsburgh has that defense with TJ Watt. Aaron Rodgers goes down there in Pittsburgh. You got Adams and hey, AB backed in uh, the Steelers country oh. with with Rodgers. There's a lot of this a <laughs> lot of good scenarios that could yeah. happen if that were to. F- I I think that Pittsburgh would be a fun place to see Aaron Rodgers play. I just I don't know how much he likes the cold weather anymore. That's true. <laughs> so, but I what mean, but what what Southern team or West Coast team needs a quarterback? Because like me and Austin are talking, if Sean Payton was there, Saints obviously. Oh, yeah. Saints would have been the greatest pick for him, you yes. know, with Sean Payton. But with Sean Payton gone, and you don't know what Mike Tom- Mike uh, Thomas is about right now, you know. True. So it's just it's interesting to see. We've talked about that before. I think Pittsburgh is a tremendous fit because Brandon, you even said before um, on previous shows that Tomlin and him have like a connection. They actually have a friendship. They spoke mm-hmm. after games, and Tomlin. Is one of them. I think he should win Coach of the Year just off the fact how bad Big Ben was in his oh, last year. Oh, oh, Jesus. On a retirement, Big Ben, you are obviously two time champ Hall of Famer. Sure. But like the fact he's been able to have a winning record every year, and with the injuries like um, Nick brought out, like with Mason Rudolph, I mean, he's only really been in the news really for the Miles Garrett thing. That wasn't necessarily a good thing because he could have died. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so like um, I think that could be very interesting. But like you said, we'll see. Yeah, we will see. It's going to be a fun off season, but we got to get to the Super Bowl first. I mean, this is a great time of year. Great time of year. True. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate your view. Make sure that you follow and subscribe wherever podcast platform you are on. Awesome. Nick, Travis, thanks for jumping on. We appreciate, appreciate all you it. guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Until next time, take care, everybody. Thank you.